you are still watching Wayne. National Love is Kind Day encourages you to become aware of how you are treating people, how people are treating you, and how you can become emboldened, supported, and empowered to lead the joyful and productive life that you deserve. With improved and proper support, families can know and experience the freedom and love found in an abuse-free home. Children grow up with positive role models, and both adults and children lead more productive, happy, and mentally healthy lives. Personally, I think that this is one of the holidays that is actually very, very important. See, that's Bible passage, First Corinthians 10. That one I can never forget in my life. Love is very important. Without love, even Jesus Christ said it's now. That you can have all these things, but if you don't have love, love yeah. you're filled. Right. Yeah, you have to love yourself first. First, very yeah, important. I think, I think that's a very tough one. Because you, mm. you can't give what you don't have. Mm. And... Loving yourself comes with accepting your flaws, you know. So I do this thing where um, every time I look in the mirror, and I know I'm very conscious of my tummy, I look at you and I say, hey, girl, I love you regardless. I love you now. I love you how you are. When we get to the destination, I will love you regardless. But, I mean, this is what I have now. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, so loving yourself is very important. Mm -hmm. No, my international love is kind day. I'm sure you have a lot to say about this. <laughs> Uh, Chiela, I will shock you that I don't have much to say today. <laughs> well, love is kind. I mean, it's it's what it is, really. And um, as human beings, um, empathy, having a sense of... Um, on this, I, I guess for me, love is about how I want to experience life and help others experience life as well. So if kindness, uh, love being what it is, something that brings all the good things in life along with it. If we can consciously, like I always say, put ourselves in the position of others when we act in certain ways and we know that we do not like the reaction or we don't like the results, then we have to be deliberate in how we treat others, how we treat ourselves, and that way, we are able to sort of start off some kind of catalyst um, movement for humanity, right? So for, for me, it, it's not just about celebrating a national love is kind day. It has to be a lifestyle and everyday experience. And we have to be deliberate about it. I know that the life that we live now, I mean, it's... It's really frustrating and a lot of people are just trying to like, you know, everybody's on the edge, so to speak. Mm -hmm. But really, we must be able to take that pause in life and reflect about what's important and be deliberate about our actions. Not every reaction re desi um, deserves, every action deserves a, a reaction. reaction as mm -hmm. well. We mm -hmm. must be proactive. We must be deliberate in how we want to be able to um, be seen. And if we are truly loved, then kindness should be second nature to who we are. Yeah. So you see, I was right. I'm sure Norma delicate. has something to say about it. <laughs> anyway, on that note, Norma, what did you find for us in the news? Hmm. Talking about love, not being kind. Mm. I have this story about a UK-based Nigerian doctor who lost custody of his son after flogging him with a belt. Now, the story has it that um, the young man, um, he, who is 16 years, by the way, um, was reported to have been flogged by his, by his father after he caught him and his friends who were invited over to study together watching an inappropriate video. I'm not sure they're showing the right picture for that. Mm. But the story has it that the you know his friends came over to to have a study, sort of a study uh, group session. And later on in the night, I think that uh, the the young man's father went into to check on them to know what they were doing, only to find them watching an inappropriate video i think his nigerian father instincts just came up to the scene 
and um, he picked up a belt and started flogging him. Unfortunately, he's based in the UK, and this uh, the other two young boys who ran out of the house quickly called the police. Before you know it, the police was involved. Before you know it, uh, care, uh, child care services were involved. And now the young man is said to have been taken into custody. And um, the the doctor, the ruling from the court says that he, he, he can no longer go back to his father's house. I don't know. This is a very, very unfortunate situation. You know, uh, our Nigerian culture using high hand to sort of train the child up unfortunately is not the way things are done in the UK here and um, this man has lost custody of his son I don't know the fate of that young man I don't even know if he knows the implications I think part of the story the boy mentioned that his father was trying to make him to read medicine as well and that he himself he was not interested in reading medicine so there's a lot of sides to this story that you know needs a, a further buttressing but for time it's just the fact that the implications both for the young man and his father at this point are definitely not looking good mm -hmm. i mean this is it's pretty sad I was, when we were in the makeup room, I was telling Jennifer, I said, even if you wanted to beat the boy, why didn't you wait for the friends to leave? And Jennifer said, even if he beats him behind closed doors, the boy can, what if we the child decides to go and report <laughs> and then shows them all the belt, the belt, you know, marks and whatnot, they will still arrest him. But, I mean. You see, when you go to Rome, behave like the Romans. The Romans, actually, yeah. You really can't, there are some things that you can't take from Nigeria over there, mm -hmm. right? It, it just wouldn't work. And I feel like a lot of Nigerians who are leaving the shores of Nigeria, to other countries right are not taking those things into consideration yeah. you feel like oh it's my child and you know the worst part is a lot of them have heard about these rules right it's against the law you can't go there and do that right mm. and expect that oh no one will do anything <laughs> you just say that's my you. child <laughs> they will lock you up <laughs> sorry about that. Right. But the nigerian mentality can just the nigerian instinct can just come up like uh, in 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 a way, yeah. you will not even remember that you were in UK until after, after. you have yeah. committed the murder. I can imagine, oh. especially in that kind of situation where the father was furious about mm. what they were doing. Jennifer, what did you find for us in the news? Anyway, uh, I would have said mine is lighter, but it's not. Um, a woman escapes being killed by a man who hit her car in Abuja. So basically what happened was she was trying to go into a restaurant, um, either a bar or something, mm -hmm. like an open space, um, junkyard, and um, she saw the guy trying to reverse, so she waited, right? She just wanted him to finish whatever he was doing and then, yeah. and then leave. But what happened was he kept reversing and then he hit her car. So by the time that happened, she thought he came down from the car and he was coming towards her car. She felt, okay, probably he was coming to apologize. But no, he was shouting at her that didn't she see him? And when he was reversing, why didn't she reverse and stuff like that? So she, she got upset. Like, mm -hmm. I mean, you ruined my car. You should be apologizing. But then you're shouting and raining curses on me. And she also got verbal with mm -hmm. him and started abusing him as well. And then he goes and he, um, what he says was, um, I'm going to kill you and nothing will happen. And she just kept on insulting him. Thought She actually thought nothing no, no of it mm -hmm. until he walked back into his car and brought out a gun and shot at her. But then he missed right so when he missed he went to shoot her again but then the gun jammed so it was in that moment that people noticed what was happening and then they gathered the guy the guy brought out the he was still trying to um uncock the gun mm -hmm. and then put it in the air shots and everyone scattered he entered his car and then he drove off only for her to actually see that with Somebody just almost killed me. Like, I was just about to lose my life like, right now. And she showed, she, she made a video of the bullets, but the guy escaped. He, he, he just left. And then that was it. We think that these things only happen in America. Only if you know that these things happen in Nigeria. So people kill people and get away with it yeah. without even... Only God knows if... What if he had actually... He didn't miss. What if he actually shot her? He would have just driven yeah, up. Yeah, he would go up and that's it. God help us in this country. Mm. And it was at night. So it wasn't even like during the day. As well, I mean, what do you find for us? Yeah, that's a bit scary. scary, I know, right? Very scary, <laughs> but um, yeah, okay. On a lighter note, on the women's world cup, Nigeria beats Australia 3 2 for first win. 
Nigerian female beat their opponent to record their first win in the competition and the fifth win in the history of the Women's World Cup. Before the match, Punch reported that the nine-time African champions have recorded only four wins in the history of the competition, two at the 1999 edition um, against North Korea and Denmark and against Canada in 2011, and at the 2019 edition where they also recorded a 2-0 win over North Korea. With the win, the Super Falcons' chance of reaching the round of 16 has been boosted after Canada secured a 2-1 victory against Ireland on Wednesday. So, I mean, we're happy about this. I know that the news will not portray these good deeds that we're doing now, but, you know, we're happy to see that Nigeria is being well represented in the Women's World Cup. My own is that the women did this for us, so yeah. Hey! <laughs> they deserve a round of applause. They do. And yeah, I'm just writing on the story that uh, Mary just uh, gave. The first lady very meeting Nobu celebrates as the Super Falcons beat Australia. And there's literally a video of Remy Tinobu in her living room celebrating this victory. Now, that's not even the part that killed me. I then went to the comment section of this post <laughs> and I died literally because <laughs> people were just giving us mass boosts. Some people say anything for clout. Tell your husband to reduce the price of fuel. <laughs> when I say, Madam, tell your husband citizens are not smiling. There's nothing funny. I'm like, come on, you guys, calm down. This woman is just happy that the women are doing well. Like, allow her brief, actually. So, yeah, I mean, it's it's actually good. Well done to Aziza, she well done to Uchena, and well done to Sinachi. Thank well, you for making us proud. Where we should be. Hey, you know, that's the question. Are we breathing? <laughs> anyway, we're going to go on a break, and when we come back, we're going to be discussing our topic for tonight. See you after the break. <laughs> 